I was one of those idiots that was like, oh, like Kucherov's going to need a couple games to like get his game legs. Like I was that person. I was like, oh, they're, they're in trouble. Like for the Florida Panthers, they can beat them. I, I was a sucker. What's going on guys? Rob Peasel back with another edition of The Breakdown. And here we are, four teams left, all battling it out for a chance to lift up a big silver trophy in the end. And who better to talk to about that than Jackie Redman from the NHL Network. Jackie, thanks so much for doing this. Uh, I'm so excited to talk hockey with you. Why, one of my first ever, actually my first ever hockey specific gig was with you and Justin Bourne, Backhand Shelf. You lovely boys invited me on there. So uh, it feels weird to be talking to you now, but uh, I really, you have always been so good to me. So it's exciting to talk. Okay, let's jump right into this. I know last year you were in the bubble for the playoffs. This year, no bubble, but certainly it's been strange. Uh, what are your thoughts on the playoffs so far? What's jumped out to you? Oh my gosh, just how many times do we have to see a team that nobody gives a shot make a deep run in the postseason before we realize that anything is possible? Like hashtag Kevin Garnett, like just make that the Stanley Cup playoffs motto because really anyone is capable of anything on any given night and the Montreal Canadiens have proved that. They're in so tough against Vegas, but I have enjoyed it to this point because it's been, it's been cool to watch some of those young kids uh, shine in big moments. It's, it's funny, throughout the playoffs I hear people say all the time, well when reality kicks in, I, I just don't know if reality even exists in the playoffs. Yeah, 100%. And I think people did that with Montreal, right? After the Leafs, like, all right, but they're going to get smoked by Winnipeg. And then they smoked Winnipeg. <laughs> and now here they are. Uh, the thing about Vegas is they're fully healthy. And as much as Habs fans don't want to hear that they caught a couple breaks in the first couple rounds, um, it's going to be so much tougher against the Vegas Golden Knights. But uh, hey, never say never, right? Okay, Jackie, uh, like a lot of people do, I follow you on Twitter, Instagram, all the social media. And I saw a video of you having a good time at an Islander game, uh, more specifically at Nassau Coliseum. And it's the last run for not only that old barn, it is an old barn, but let's face it, it's an historic barn. You were there, you saw the Stanley Cup banners. Um, paint me a bit of a picture here. What's the feeling like there? Is it really nostalgic? Do you feel like the fans are kind of saying goodbye to that historic building? I think so. Like that was the first time I had ever been to Nassau Coliseum. Might be the last. It might be the only chance that I get to go there. But I think in talking to a lot of the fans there and just sort of like surveying the atmosphere, I think they all know that something really special is coming to an end. And arenas aren't built like that anymore, right? Like they're spacious and luxurious and that's cool. Like shiny things are fun. But there's something about an old barn with history that guys like Ken Danico talk about playing in and hating playing in and it's sad that something like that is coming to an end but it is cool that the Islanders are on this run right now at the end of an era really and so it's kind of the collision of two worlds this new Islanders team that is still surprising people that don't believe in it and think that they're boring um, and it's all happening in this old barn I think it's really cool to see a team go on a deep run right now. Because if, if the Islanders weren't any good, it would have just, it just would have been over. There would have been nothing special about that final game at Nassau Coliseum. Seriously though, how crazy would it be if they won the Stanley oh, Cup on that ice? Do you imagine? Year? But like not out of the realm of possibility here, which is wild. Like it's mind blowing, but that would just be like the perfect cap to the story, right? We'll see. Okay, let's switch gears here for a second. Uh, I want to talk about the Tampa Bay Lightning and specifically Nikita Kucherov, who's putting on a show for the second straight year. And I remember last year, given the fact that we had the season kind of end abruptly, we had a 2014 playoff, there was a bubble situation. I remember people arguing as to whether or not the winner, AKA the Tampa Bay Lightning, should have an asterisk next to their name on the Stanley Cup. And I thought that was nuts. You win the Stanley Cup, you win the Stanley Cup. But that's brought up again this year for a completely different reason. You know what I'm talking about. People bringing up the fact that the Tampa Bay Lightning played fast and loose with cap circumvention in regards to Nikita Kucherov. Uh, you jump on social media, people are complaining about it all the time. Are you tired of the complaining? 
Yes, because anyway, if your own team was doing it, you'd be like, well, it's but they just found a loophole. They played within the rules. Like, don't hate the player, hate the game. Like Tampa did what any other team would do if put in that same situation. So yes, I'm tired of the complaining because if the shoe was on the other foot, like if the Islanders had, had done something similar, their fan base wouldn't care. They'd be like, well, I mean, like the league should change the rules then. Like, don't be mad. So yeah, I mean, get over it. It's over, you know, like whatever. It's happening. Nothing's gonna stop it. So you just gotta, you gotta deal. All right, Jackie, if we were able to go back to the first ever hockey game that was ever played, I guarantee we'd find two people watching the game and complaining about the referees. It's just what hockey and sports fans, let's be honest, do on a regular basis. But I find that over the last year or two, it's just reached another level. And I don't know if it's because certain instances have really been put under the spotlight. I mean, all you have to do is look at game two between the Islanders and the Lightning. I think Pellick is going to drive Braden Point right into Semyon Varlamov. There is no chance Point can hold his balance here. Braden Point trying to plead his case, saying, watch the replay. He's going to get called. Stamkos is not buying it. I'm not buying it. I have no idea why this is a penalty. And, and obviously, you guys know there's too many men on the ice there. They had seven guys, so uh, disappointed at that. That one hurt uh, quite a bit because now you're, if they get the third one, there's a little bit of, a little bit more separation. Then you throw in the fact that many people believe there's just two rule books, one for the regular season and one for the playoffs, and you've got a whole bunch of hockey fans constantly complaining about refereeing. So I've got two questions. One, are you as tired of hearing people complain about refereeing as you are about Nikita Kucherov? And number two, what do you think of the two rule book situation because you can physically see it something happens a player gets mauled and you've got a referee throwing his hands up almost saying i don't want to make that call with two minutes left in a tie game right but you'll make it in the first two minutes which is it seems so wrong i'll answer the first question first the complaining so i'm going to turn and be a hypocrite myself i love when there's controversial calls in the playoffs i think it's so entertaining to see how it plays out right because part of winning in sports is dealing with things that don't go your way and whether it's a missed call or a blown call or a wrong call or an injury or whatever it is like you got to find a way and the good teams always do i really believe that tampa bay yes that was a that was a crappy crappy call on braden point there is no denying that but they still went on to win the game because they're really good um, so I'm not sick of the complaining. What the solution to the problem is, I have no idea. And that's the problem because you get people on Twitter, right? Not to keep going back to social media, like, well, that should be challengeable. They should be able to review that. And it's like, I want no part of getting into a game where we're constantly reviewing everything and going back and changing calls because then you're just entering a slippery slope, I think, where now everything is up for debate. And we, we just can't have that. It's an imperfect game. Referees are calling it. They're not perfect people. They don't watch the game in slow-mo like the rest of us. And so you kind of have to live by the sword, die by the sword. And I think every team deals with it. There are just some instances that are more egregious than others that get us very riled up and think that, you know, that it costs the team a game. But you know, Rob, there's no one single call for the most part. 99% of the time is not what costs you the game. Okay, last question, Jackie. We're at that point of the playoffs, four teams left, where people are either bragging about their picks, saying, look, I told you so. I told you this team would be here. Or they just shy away and get real quiet when people talk about their picks. Uh, who is your pre-playoff pick and does it stand right now? Okay, so my first round picks were terrible. But, oh, they're so bad. I was four and four. It was really not a good time. Uh, but <laughs> I did take the Vegas Golden Knights to win it all. That was my pick. I'm feeling really good about that right now. In the first round, I was a little worried, but they just look so good now. They're healthy. So for me, it's the Vegas Golden Knights. They've been knocking on the door. It's crazy to think what they've done in four years since entering the league. But I do think that they feel like a team of destiny a little bit here. So um, my pick looks good right now, but uh, we'll see.